we can't really be pitted against each other, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And when we when we have these conversations, and I read a lot of these comments with some with some kids, they're like, "Well, this is why I didn't support BLM because they're out here, you know, killing us or whatever, right?" Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the only thing I could say to that is that you can go ahead and find a lot of the negative things if you want to find it. But if you look in my comments, like 30, 40 percent is black people saying like hey we got your back i'm sorry this happened this shit is unacceptable um and <laughs> in five four three two one what's up everybody welcome to another episode of the genius brain podcast i am your host david so and we have once again our co-host ed drick park <laughs> back again yo jazz hands baby <laughs> well this has been a very interesting past couple of weeks because uh, a lot of people have asked me to talk about what's been going on specifically with the Asian American community and mm. a lot of the attacks that have been happening. Um, and, you know, when it was first happening, I didn't really say much. Yeah. Just because it was, number one, I, I think it was so shocking, you know, because when I when I picture somebody getting attacked, I picture some young person, you know, getting fucked up by some dudes or mm-hmm. whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe... I don't know. Maybe he did something to provoke something. I don't know what it is. You right? know, when you think of an attack, you don't think of one, a minor or an elderly. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? You just <laughs> when we say elderly, I'm talking about the biggest one of all was the 84 year old man who was just walking. He was walking in front of a garage or maybe his complex. Mm-hmm. And this kid, um, Antoine something, I can't remember his name right now. Maybe it's because I've been so enraged, but he literally shoves this man full force right. as hard as possible and he actually dies from the trauma mm-hmm. from when he was shoved. And the crazy thing about that whole situation was like, I couldn't wrap my head around why. Yeah. It's like, wh- why? And mm-hmm. people are saying, or I think I read, they're, 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 it's leading that it was actually racially charged. Mm-hmm. Obviously because of the whole, you know, the nation's perspective on Asian people because of the coronavirus and, yeah. and, a, and a lot of other shit, right? And, you know, when this happened, a lot of people were like, you aren't saying things why aren't you saying something you were so loud for blm it's mm-hmm. like listen here you little fuck face give me some <laughs> fucking time you know what i mean like yeah. let me think about what the fuck i'm going to say yeah i don't think you guys understand like this obviously hits a lot closer to home mm-hmm. and because these attacks were happening so frequently it was like I, it, what would you say it was a string of like 20 something yeah, there i think there was a 20 to 30 attacks in a span of like two weeks that and and, and I, like i was saying it wasn't even hitting mainstream news yeah. you know this it was just happening mm-hmm. um and so it's it's just one of those things where you like you let's remove the race part out of it first and just think why the fuck would you want to attack an elderly person like they're helpless yeah. they're, they're they're so fucking defenseless you know and and the fact that a fall could end their life it, i don't know if if the people who are attacking necessarily realize even if they don't realize that there's still no fucking excuse yeah it was hard to wrap around and every time i i felt like i was going to say something somebody else got attacked somebody Mm -hmm. else got attacked Mm -hmm. so i just had to keep processing and processing and so when it comes to a topic like this that's very heavy um and it's a lot more personal i have so much shit to process because first it was like anger then it was sadness then it was questioning why Mm -hmm. and so you know one of the biggest points that i wanted to get across to a lot of people is shut the fuck up Mm. like you know some people process things differently. And I think the odd thing was, and I, this is for, and I call these these young kids who do this, yeah. you guys are Yelp elite people. You are the people <laughs> who pride themselves in being a Yelp elite. And the reason why I make that comparison mm-hmm. is because you are the type of people that'll go to an establishment, or in this case, a person, and attack somebody who is actually going through the same shit that you're going because it's an easier target. Mm. It's easier to go ahead and try to yell at me and say, why aren't you saying anything? Rather than you going out and saying something yourself, yeah. you're a little pussy. You're the, you're the exact same thing. Well, <laughs> you know, you're a little bitch. To be fair, to be fair, I think the the people who are requesting a response from you definitely falls into different schools, though, right? Mm-hmm. Some might just be wanting just because they look up to you to hear your perspective. I'm not talking about those people. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about the ones that are fucking attacking me. Right, right. right? Like, not just me. You motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yo, bro, like chill. Yeah. You can't, how are you going to say I am for Asian Americans and then attack an, an Asian American? Like, yeah. You don't make any fucking sense. Yeah. You're a fucking Yelp elite review not, writer. Not dude. to mention, bro, it's just like sometimes, man, given the state of things and, and like what we've been through in the past year or so, it's exhausting. You know what I mean? Like it's exhausting to keep talking about shit that brings you down, that yeah. that that you know gives you grief. It, like it puts you in such a negative space 
Like, dude, we're fucking human beings too, man. Sometimes, like, we're aware that shit's going on, but just for our own mental health and, like, our own sake, we need to kind of separate ourselves from it a little bit, distance it from a little bit. And then once we're kind of in a space, we're like, okay, that's something I can absorb and, and like, kind of uh, digest a little bit better now that I'm in a, I feel like I'm in a better space. But then it's like, you know, instant gratification world. Yeah, well, it's it's this idea that a lot of young people have. Not, I'm, I'm sorry, not young people. I'm going to stop saying that. Just people in general have mm-hmm. that you get to shit on somebody because it's easier. Mm. You know, you want that pat on your back. Oh, did you know I was the one that called out all these Asian American influencers? You are masturbating to your wokeness. And I fucking hate that shit. Mm. People process things differently. And if the objective is for us to uplift each other, do you think that the first thing that you should do is go ahead and attack another Asian American verbally? That doesn't make fucking sense. You are <laughs> trash bag. You literally make no sense. Yeah. If you have that energy, go ahead and do it into something positive. Because by the way, a huge issue that I have too is that you guys expect these celebrities who by the way, aren't some sometimes aren't the best people to talk about anything yeah, right. because, because just because they are known for something doesn't mean that they're smart i actually don't want some of these people to say anything at all <laughs> i want them to shut the fuck up and let smart people speak yeah. which can be a lot of you mm-hmm. a lot of you have the same platform that we we do it may not be as large as ours mm-hmm. but there's also power in numbers for you sure can, it starts somewhere man yeah don't sit and wait for us to do something like i said on my instagram story it's going to happen, but you have to let me think about these things because I do have a bigger platform. Mm-hmm. So the things that I say can be more impactful. So I can't just go off and start saying, fuck you. I hate you, blah, 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 blah. We can do all that, but I need to say something at the end. Yeah. That stuff is only effective if I have a proper message. So, at, you know, moving on from that, fuck you. Moving on, <laughs> <laughs> you know, be smart about what you guys are doing. Um, so there was the 84 year old time, man. There was the Filipino man who was like slashed across his face with a knife. Yeah. Which shocked me. There was the, there was one guy who attacked multiple uh, elder, uh, elderly people in Chinatown in Oakland. Mm-hmm. Um, last year, there was a person that was, uh, they doused this person in flames. They put um, like oil or alcohol on this older lady and yeah. just lit her on fire. Yeah. It's just been kind of crazy how frequent it's been. And um, what a lot of people don't know is that older Asian Americans are easier targets because we all know this, you know, our parents ne- would rarely ever call the cops. Mm-hmm. Number one, they think it's too much trouble mm-hmm. or number two, they, there's a language barrier, yeah. right? So they're very, very easy targets. And specifically right now, Lunar New Year is coming up. They're expecting a lot of these uh, older Asian people to have cash and money on them. So they're trying mm-hmm. to rob them. Right. So there's this idea and concept. And, uh, and if you guys don't know, this is something that you should know. And if nobody's going to Nobody's going to protect our community except for us. We can't just wait for somebody else to do it. No doubt. We are 5.6% of this of this country's population. Very, very fucking small. Mm-hmm. And I think we don't get to see that because we live in California, right? Mm-hmm. And so I, I see a lot of people saying like, well, where are the cops? What are they going to do? Let me tell you something about the cops. There's not a lot of them, <laughs> right? And so when these things happen, you have to be there first. If yeah. you know about these type of situations and you see things happening... And I'm not saying that you have to do things in an aggressive manner and get angry, but you have to be mindful and know about these things so you can help when it's needed. Oh, for sure. And and uh, the strange thing is, is that it's it's happening in um you know a pretty concentrated area of, of like Asian Oakland, people. San Francisco, and, mm-hmm. and the Asian people in in those communities, which is kind of strange to begin with, because uh, there's a pretty big Asian community out yeah. there. Um, but either way, the fact that it's uh, racially charged and they're targeting elderly people. It's it's so despicable and so cowardly, man. Like when I first started seeing the stuff about it, it, it just, it pissed me off. That was my first reaction. Cause I'm like, dude, what if that was my grandpa or my grandma or my mom and my dad? I mean, they're getting older now too. So ah, like it, the first thing thoughts you have is kind of like what you would do to retaliate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, yeah. or like if you were there, and you saw it happen what you would do um but you know you can't you can't match violence with violence right you, you got to kind of let the the initial i guess anger subside and, and think about it more reasonably but yeah i think they should make more of an effort to to really kind of band together so that there's more of like and a sort of neighborhood watch type of thing yeah, like a, a a sense of community yeah yeah you know? so that if you spot and 
elderly Asian person, since that's kind of like the target profile for for these mm-hmm. attackers, just be a little bit more aware. You know what I mean? If, if you it, see them walking around in the streets or whatever. And there's a lot of nuance to this because I know it's 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 really difficult, right? Because when we say Asian, and I've talked about this on the podcast before, there is an issue of a language barrier thing, right? Yeah. That we're going to have to work past because when we say Asian, you have any idea how many languages and cultures that is, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's like even sometimes too, like I remember even like sometimes trying to, uh, when, when an elder like Chinese lady would come up to me, mm-hmm. she would start speaking to me in Cantonese or Mandarin. Yeah. And I can't even help her, but she sees a familiar face and yeah. we just get, it gets lost in translation. Yeah. I'm still trying to help this lady out. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of like elder Asian people have experienced that. So it's hard for them to reach out for help mm. and it's hard for them to communicate with people. For so, sure. when, so when these things happen, they never report this to the cops. Yeah. Right. And so if they're even alive to report it, you exactly. know what I mean? And that's, that's, it's just a really fucked up situation. Right. So uh, the, the idea that we have to wait for this savior to come and help us out. It's just not going to happen. No. Like it's even hard for us to help each other out because we're all so different. Korean Americans to Japanese Americans to Vietnamese Americans to Korean Amer- uh to uh to I don't know um some other fucking fucks <laughs> some Indian Americans. You know? <laughs> I just got lost. Yeah. I got lost in the sauce right there. It's like Korean Americans, Korean Americans, like North Korea, so South Korea. Yeah. You know, but that that's the that's the thing that um and I'm not saying this too by the way that these cultures can't empathize with somebody else when they get hurt. That's yeah. completely not what <clears throat> I'm saying. What I'm saying is that that communication level is also a hurdle that we have to get through, mm-hmm. you know? And so when this happens too, like there's also been another issue. Like one of the bigger things is like uh, that it's been very conflicting for a lot of people is that a lot of the people that have been attacking Asian Americans that have been put out through media or whether social media has been a lot of black Americans, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And this was a very like weird and touchy subject for a lot of people to go ahead. And number one, February is Black History Month, mm-hmm. right? Number two- It's also Chinese New Year. <laughs> it's also Chinese New Year at the same time, right? Yeah. And so um, the the weird thing is, is like we can't really be pitted against each other, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And when we when we have these conversations, and I read a lot of these comments with some, with some kids, they're like, well, this is why I didn't support BLM because they're out here, you know, killing us or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the only thing I could say to that is that you can go ahead and find a lot of the negative things if you want to find it. But if you look in my comments, like 30, 40% is black people saying like, Hey, we got your back. I'm sorry. This happened. This shit is unacceptable. Um, and that's what I'm going to look towards. Right. Mm-hmm. Because as of right now, like, so, like people are trying to make this thing, like a race pro, war, a race war, like yeah. pro Asian. You, you, in order for you to be pro Asian, you have to be anti black because mm-hmm. the stuff that we've seen so far is from young black Americans, right? Mm-hmm. Specifically, male black mm-hmm. Americans, right? And th- that's a very, very dangerous territory to walk into. Number one, because you can't judge a whole ethnic group based on the actions of a few individuals. Right. That goes for all the stuff that's happened that we, we've said this stuff with cops. We can't say that all cops are bad because mm-hmm. of a few individuals. We can talk about the institution. Mm-hmm. We can also talk about in this case of how little a lot of like Asian Americans are respected. Right. Right. Because when this stuff has happened, even in the comments, when I did a video on it, right. There were so many comments saying like, yo, I never heard about this. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, that's fucking nuts. For sure. It's not going to get like the same kind of media attention. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, that's kind of like the story of Asians, the, the plight of Asians in general, yeah. right? It's just kind of quiet suffering, mm-hmm. you know, for the most part. Yeah. I think that's the hard thing for a lot of people to process, right? Because when they saw the whole BLM movement happen and they saw visibility for people who were being murdered out in the streets, mm-hmm. I think a lot of Asian Americans thought like, yo, when this happens to us, because we were in support of BLM, this is going to be reciprocated back. And now this country knows that you can't just fuck with people like that. Mm-hmm. And then when it happened to an Asian American, everybody just kind of turned turned their shoulders or just kind of turned the other cheek. Yeah, And it was like shocking for a lot of these young kids, right? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of you young kids out there, a lot of young Asian Americans out there that are seeing this right now, because of your age, you haven't seen this happen to us multiple times. It right. has happened a lot. Mm-hmm. So for when this happened, I wasn't shocked. I'm a little older than you guys. Mm-hmm. I'm not that shocked. Like it's always, we've always been the sideline story. No yeah. matter what, when, yeah. no matter when this stuff happened. So I think a lot of these kids are like, well, what about this proactivism that happened? I thought it was going to be reciprocated or returned. But that also shows the behavior and and the, uh, the, the idea that people have of Asian Americans. A lot of people don't take us seriously. It's a reality check. 
it's a reality check, right? Because you see all of this, you know, proactiveness in terms of um, bringing an issue to the forefront and, and, and having it become a national movement. And like you just said, to have that same type of expectation, just being a minority yourself, if this ever happens to our group of people, then seeing what we've seen, seeing how it seems like we're in a more progressive culture now, but then it's like, well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, that's the, what? Really? That's the, but hold up, my friends. This podcast is brought to you by IP Vanish. For those of you who don't know, IP Vanish is a VPN or a virtual private network that helps you safely browse the internet. Listen up. Simply put, if you are on your computer doing just about anything and you don't have a VPN, you are fucking nuts. IP Vanish is something that you need. Being online is fun, but your data is everywhere and having it encrypted is a must. You have to keep your personal data and information encrypted. You cannot be just giving it out to just anybody and you don't even know who's looking at it. Here's everything that you get with IP Vanish. Anonymous IP addresses. This means your personal IP address can't be tracked by anyone on the web. You can circumvent any online censorship, and you can get protection when using public Wi-Fi. So basically nobody can snoop on your data or see what you're doing online. So go to ipvanish.com slash brain, claim your 65% savings. They have plans starting at just $349 a month, super cheap or $27.99 a year. And yes, it is worth it. This is the time to sign up. IP Vanish is the best of the best, and it even has a 4.7 out of 5 rating on Trustpilot. That's actually really hard to get. Remember Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash brain to get the deal and protect yourself online. That's ipvanish.com slash brain. Again, it's a reality check. I mean, it, and, and it really is kind of like a commentary on society that mm -hmm. Asians just are not quite there yet in terms of getting recognition or respect, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's already that argument within entertainment, how Asians never had kind of equal representation and we're just now starting to chip away at that little mm -hmm. by little but in a human rights standpoint right we're still it's still just, not it's still not there yeah and you know when I, you, I i was you know seeing a lot of this too they were you know people were bringing up trump again the former president of the united states mm -hmm. when they were saying when he said china virus he put a green light on a lot of asians for sure for sure and that is very true however i there's a there's a deeper thing behind that is that these sentiments were already there. Yeah. He just kind of bolstered that idea before. It's like that stuff doesn't happen unless there was already a foundation laid before it for it to be that effective. Right. Right. And so, you know, when we don't get taken seriously, it's 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 a really hard pill to swallow, mm -hmm. right? Because it's it's like I always ask, it's like, well, what do you want? Like, what do you want us to Riot? Mm -hmm. Should, do we have to start busting windows, start burning shit down for you guys to take us seriously? Yeah. And I don't think that not number one, not that it's not in us. It's definitely there. I mean, mm -hmm. we've had revolutions and riots in in all over Asia, right? Yeah. We've seen it happen multiple times in yeah. wars. However, it's I don't want to see our culture do that, and it's very hard to see that happen with an older generation because of these people that are being taken advantage of the, mm -hmm. the, the elderly and older people. I think they have this, this idea and thought of like graciousness. They're very grateful to be in America mm -hmm. and no matter what happens to them here, it's still better than when they, where they were yeah, before. Yeah. So even to that extent, like complaining or reporting crimes, isn't going to happen because for them it's like, whatever, like a great example of this is like, I had my friend, um, B new like she, uh, she's, a a 1FC fighter. Mm -hmm. And she just told this really small story that kind of really does put a perspective into how a lot of Asian immigrants view this country mm -hmm. who did come from like war-torn countries or they lived in villages. Like she was talking about she moved to like East Oakland. Mm -hmm. East Oakland is fucking hood and ghetto as fuck. And yeah. you know, you're living with on, on food stamps and you know, you're living in an apartment with like five or six people. And then people are complaining that they're poor. And the only thing she thought was like, well, I have AC. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I'm living in luxury. <laughs> right. So you have these these type of people mm -hmm. who really do love this country to mm -hmm. that type of extent. Mm -hmm. And you expect them to complain about the small things that they're going with which they consider small, not mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, another thing to really consider too is like um in this country historically, look at how Asian people in general have kind of been viewed. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. 
back from the Chinese who were building the railroad, right? The caricatures that we used to see. Of, the buck oh, teeth. Oh, whoa, whoa, wing chong, you yeah. know? I mean, it kind of stems from that. And then, um, you know, the, the internment camps for the Japanese, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that, I feel like, doesn't get talked about as seriously as it should be. Yeah. Or as, as it should. Um, that, was a, that was pretty... That was pretty fucked yeah, up. Yeah, that was pretty fucked up. You know, I mean... Granted, it wasn't like, you know, a Nazi camp, right? Mm -hmm. That was obviously far more heinous, but even still, it was, it was kind of persecuting a group of people because of their race yeah. specifically. And then you look at kind of the stereotypes of Asian men, Asian women. It's not very positive, right? Asian women are looked at from uh, kind of this... Submissive. Yeah, submissive, uh, you know, like tight pussy, exotic, like... You know yeah. what I mean? Then you're not really looked at as a human being. You just kind of looked at as this um, this prize. Yeah, you you're just like this uh, just chunk of meat, right? Yeah. And then what are Asian men, right? Stereotypes. Oh, you got small dicks. You guys are pussies, right? Like, and so look at all this negative connotation that exists in American society of the Asian people, and the fact that the whole being subservient thing is not just towards Asian women, but just the Asian community in general. Yeah. I mean, it was a compliment for Japanese back in what, the 40s and the 50s to be called an honorary right. You're like, you're an honorary oh, yeah, white yeah. person, right? And that makes you good. Uh -huh. <laughs> because you just do what you need to do. You don't, you don't talk back. You don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. You just do whatever the hell it is that you ching chongs do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and as a result we'll give you the title of being an honorary white yeah and, and so like that's you just kind of look at the history of that of, of like asian people in america and and it's no mystery why we're just just kind of just in the background we're not it's weird because these asian ideals that a lot of people have that in my opinion, or in, for a lot of Asian people, it's number one, a smarter way to deal mm -hmm. with people coming at you and mm -hmm. you know saying these like negative things about you mm -hmm. is not perceived as a sign of strength in this country, right? So for example, like pacifism, right? Oh, if you're a pacifist, you're a bitch. Mm -hmm. That's what Americans think in this country, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to put it in perspective like this, and what I don't think a lot of people understand, and this is the perspective that my parents had, right? When a lot of racist shit would be said to them, like, or some terrible things would happen to them. They go, I'm better than these people. Why would I even speak to them? Mm -hmm. You know? And it's it's so funny how in Asian culture is like, you don't really speak to somebody at the level that you're at if, you, if they're beneath you, mm -hmm. right? And so what they see that is, oh, this person's a bitch because they're not saying anything. But a lot of Asian people in our culture, if we don't think that you're somebody that we should fuck with, it's not because we're scared. It's because like, it's like we're talking to a dog. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if somebody comes at you and says racial epithets, goes ching chong, you're a gook, blah, 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 blah. But you're coming through here. You're shopping at my store. It's like my dad's like most customers aren't like that. Yeah. It's that 2% that comes in and those people aren't even on our level. Right. They're not the, on the level of the other customers in the store and they're not on my level. So why do I even get mad? It's that concept of like when a dog howls at the moon, does a moon howl back? <laughs> it doesn't, <laughs> you know? Well, and especially when you're Korean too, because like, you know, Korea's history is pretty fucked up in terms of like us getting persecuted. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been persecuted cause for being Korean, yeah. <laughs> even by within the Asians, yeah. you know, by the Japanese, by the mm -hmm. Chinese. So, um, you know, having kind of like, I'm not saying there's no sensitivity to racism, but it's such a long part of Korean history. Yeah. And so like, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't uh, phase them. Yeah, it doesn't phase them as much as it would for like somebody who grew up in America. Like, oh, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> how you dare know? you say that to me? And like racism too is is such a race and color is a is an idea and a topic that is discussed a lot in this country specifically. For sure. For sure. You talk to a lot of other people in other countries, they don't talk about it as much as uh as as Americans do. Mm -hmm. Like the the racial identity crisis. It happens a lot over here. So you know, based on American standards, people see these Asian people or Asian Americans as pacifists. But when you look at it from our perspective or my, you know, my parents' perspective, it's like, listen, I work hard. I make money. I provide for my family. Somebody comes and calls me a dog that I eat dog and they call me Ching Chong. It's yeah. like, that's all that they have. Yeah. Like, what, how the, why the fuck would I get mad at somebody who is not even at my level? But you see the difference though, right? That's, that's 
that's kind of the whole difference behind like the immigrant mentality. Yeah. Like I came here for a purpose, you know, and to an extent I've gotten what I was hoping to get. Mm -hmm. Like you just said, like my family's good. You know, I got a job, I got a home, I got clothes on my back, I got food. I'm okay. But then you look at kind of the entitled mentality that a lot of Americans have who has who have never traveled before, who've mm -hmm. never been outside of their bubble here. And ignorance plays a big part of it. And and so like for them, they're coming with that. That, that that's that ignorant energy. You know what yeah. I mean? And then for like somebody who's had to sacrifice and, and compromise so much to get to another country, just like, eh, you know, it's like, yeah, that sucks, but whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever, you know? So I'm saying, like, they, yeah. they think that is a, is a sign of weakness, but it's more like, yeah, fuck you, dude. Yeah, it's <laughs> you silent know? strength. It's like, it's like, it's silent strength. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you're not even worth my time. Yeah. And so I think for a younger generation, when you guys see that and you look at your parents and you're like, well, you should have said something. It's like, you don't even know what your parents have went, went exactly. through. You don't know exactly. what's going on in their mind. Yeah. It's like, and you know, for you to be in your level of comfort and then kind of dog an older generation for not doing your form of activism, it's a different time. Mm -hmm. And I think it kind of sucks because sometimes, you know, kids think that their parents set a precedence for Asian people to be bullied, but they didn't have, you didn't have to worry about the stuff that they had to worry about. Right. And once again, it's because of these Asian ideals and these Asian, these Confucius Taoist beliefs that just don't translate well over here. Mm. And so, like I said, and you know, in my person, in my personal video that I did on Instagram is that people have taken like our like sympathy and our pacifism as a sign of weakness when mm. it was the exact opposite. Mm. It, Asian people are business owners. Well, you know, if, they make money. If, they're fucking fighters too. Yeah. You have to fight to get what you got here. You 100%. Know yeah. So it's not, I wouldn't say, you know, they're, they're necessarily passive, right? Yeah. Um, Cause yeah, you had to do a lot of fucking fighting to get what you got here. Mm -hmm. And, and, and part of that fighting is against racism as well. Yeah. So it's more of like, uh, the strong and silent type. I mean, cause look, man, when I was growing up, like my parents didn't want me getting into fights, but when I got into fights, my dad would ask me, did you win at least? I know. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? I feel like that's more of like, a Korean thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, if you fought, you fought. I'm not happy about it, but did you win at least? Yeah. Right? Of course I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You um, know what? You know what's um, kind of funny about that whole thing too is like when we talk about like uh, fighting, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think that standing up for your rights per se, as because of the the cultural milieu mm -hmm. um, of what's happening right now in this country, people think that you have to fight for your rights through violence. Yeah. But there's also so, small, subtle things that you can do. Mm -hmm. Right. For example, and I know it's hard. It's hard because sometimes you're kind of going through this balance of number one, am I being too sensitive mm -hmm. or is this the time and place to go ahead and bring some of this stuff up, right? So for example, when you hear somebody makes like racist Asian jokes and you kind of sit there and you don't say anything, depending on the situation, right? Is everybody's having fun and you can make fun of their race too, then that's just a good time, right? Yeah. You know, gauge those situations. But there's small things that you can do that'll show that you don't have to take shit just by saying, hey, cut that shit out. Mm -hmm. You think that you have to be like me where I'm in everybody's face and cursing <laughs> somebody out. I actually don't do that a lot in person. Yeah. If I do that to somebody in person, it usually means we're about to throw down yeah. or some shit's about to happen. Right. But it's just small shit like this. Like I'll be having a conversation and um, like, for example, this happened like a, a few years back, right? There was a white dude that dated an Asian girl, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And I met him um, through like this, this company thing. He used to work at this, uh, this company that I was attached to. And he made Asian jokes simply mm. because he thought he had a green lights because he went out with an Asian girl. Mm. Right. And I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Now, a part of me thought like, Hey, if I say like, yo, cut that shit out, I'm probably going to be a buzzkill because mm -hmm. it's around other people. Yeah. Right. So I had to, I had to go ahead and balance that shit out. And so what I decided to do was, you know, after he made a few jokes and you could tell a few people are uncomfortable, yeah. I took him aside. I was like, Hey bro, cut that shit out. Yeah. Like nobody's laughing. <laughs> yeah. Like I know you had an Asian girlfriend and shit, yeah. but still inappropriate. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> don't do that shit. Man. Read the room, my man. <laughs> yeah, you know? I was like, Read the room and yeah. cut that shit out. I wasn't yelling at him. Yeah. I wasn't being hyper aggressive, but I was letting him know like, Hey, 
cut that shit out mm-hmm. or I'm gonna have to check you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I did check him in mm-hmm. a very nice way. Mm-hmm. And he stopped that stuff. Mm-hmm. You can do small things like that. For sure. It's hard, right? And I think a lot of the times people are afraid to be uncomfortable because of how weird it makes you feel. But growth doesn't happen when you're comfortable. It happens when you're uncomfortable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's human nature to want to be out of that, you know, uncomfortable zone, right? Yeah. You, you put your hand over fire. What's your reaction? You, put, <laughs> you take it away. Yeah. You don't want to get burned. You don't want to feel that discomfort. And so, yeah, that is really a big thing is, is taking action like just on small things. Yeah. Just yourself, right? Yeah. You can't, you can't sit there and get angry about things or, you know, feel a certain way about things. But like when you see. Before we continue, my friends, let's talk about Purple. One of my favorite, favorite sponsors ever because I love my Purple mattress. Yeah, if you think your bed is good, sure. If you put sprinkles on a piece of dookie, guess what? Still a piece of dookie. Well, guess what? The Purple mattress is the sprinkle not the poopy. Let's talk about it for a second. The purple grid sets the purple mattress apart from every other mattress. It's a patented comfort technology. Ever since I've had my purple mattress, I have never slept so dang good in my life. And when you sleep well, your brain functions better. You actually are a lot healthier and it's been proven to improve your life in so many different ways. You have no idea. You actually spent a lot of your life sleeping. So why do it in pain? Why do it in discomfort? Get on this purple mattress. And in fact, if you get one, who knows? I may be there with you in your bed. Only if you like. If not, I'm just, okay, this is getting weird. Let's continue this. Anyways, guys, experience the purple grid and you'll sleep like never before. Go to purple.com slash GB10 and use promo code GB10. For a limited time, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash GB10, promo code GB10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Terms apply. That type of negativity happened and you're around it, you just... Well, I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything because I feel weird if I say something. Yeah. And listen, I'm going to be honest too. Like when there are situations too, where sometimes people say some weird shit about Asian people and I'm just exhausted. I don't want to say anything, you know, and sometimes people get a pass on it depending on the situation. Yeah, it depends on your mood too. Yeah. Right? Like sometimes I, I want, I want all the fucking heat. <laughs> Bring it to me. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Yeah. You know, but other times I'm just like, I'm too tired to deal with this yeah. shit. But like I got know. my own shit going on right now, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and next time I won't, I won't give this person a pass. Yeah. But there's like small little things that you can do on the day to day type of stuff, right? Don't be a buzzkill. Read the situation. Like if everybody's clowning on each other and they're making race jokes, mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right. It happens all the time. Like especially mm-hmm. where I grew up, somebody made a fucking Asian joke. I made a black joke or a yeah. white joke or a Mexican joke and right. everybody was laughing. Right. But if you're the only person that's getting picked on and simply because of your ethnicity and you're Asian, and then you, you might have to say something and you might be in those uncomfortable situations where you have to figure out like, yo, uh, last time I did this, I was overreacting and now everybody hates me. Yeah. But you're not going to be able to navigate those social situations until you try. Yeah. I mean, I told you, bro, I got into so many fucking fights when I was in elementary because like the, the racist white kids. Yeah. I, I'm not even going to go as far as calling them racist, ignorant white ignorant, kids. Yeah. yeah. You know, they, they just, uh, you know, making fun of like the food that I eat, the language, you know, and like, bro, I, I could not let that shit slide. Even being a first grader, second grader, whatever, like mm-hmm. it offended me to the point, like we're fucking throwing hands Yeah. to the point that sometimes I'd fight kids much older than me and get my ass whooped. But it's like, dude, I just need to hit you once. That's all I'm yeah. trying to do, you know, Yeah. because what you said is fucking pissing me off. Like, yeah. but I'm not saying to, to resort to violence like that, but I'm saying it, it's, you got to step up for yourself in that way. If, what you just mentioned if somebody is like clowning on you your your heritage your culture whatever and it's just you alone nobody else is is you know laughing except the, the well no everybody else is laughing except you yeah then there, that's a pretty good sign where you got to stand up for yourself there you know by yeah. saying something but throwing a motherfucker <laughs> you know and i know or, and i know it's hard too because it's easier said and done for somebody like me that grew up in an area where a majority of people were of color that, yeah yeah you know, a good in my school it was like over like 30 or 40 percent people were asian so mm-hmm. it's easier you know it's hard for that kid out there in fucking butt fuck middle of nowhere you know and you're in a place called fucking chicken foot wisconsin <laughs> bro <laughs> it's you know what the most ironic shit about that is man 
is when I faced that type of like ignorance, that was when we actually moved into a decent neighborhood, like from mm. K-Town to like, uh, I lived in La Palma for a little bit. That's because my parents were starting to do okay for themselves. And then, so it was like the first house that they, that we got, but isn't that shit the most ironic, right? Like you're, you're getting out of poverty and you're getting out of like, you know, all of this crime or whatever. And then you get there and it's like, that's the most miserable I was, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, dude, these fucking kids are hating on me, like on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I just, I just found that ironic. Cause like, I don't think my parents would have really expected that or thought that would have happened because they're thinking I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give my kid a better life. Yeah. Put him in a better surrounding around better schools. Did you hear about that story about the, um, the white family that moved into a mainly Vietnamese neighborhood? I think it was out in the OC. Westminster. Westminster. You heard about <laughs> it has that. has to be Westminster. Yeah, yeah around right? there, right? <laughs> but you heard about that. But you hear about, so this, this white family moves in, right? Yeah. And they started making like Asian racist jokes to the Vit their Vietnamese oh, neighbor no. in the OC. Oh, no. In like Westminster, probably Westminster, but it's bro, like the yeah. whole neighborhood is Vietnamese, bro, right? And, and there's a certain group of Vietnamese people that, that you that, do that want to watch the fuck out. Yeah. And so the crazy thing is, it's like, it's not just the, the parents, right? It was like the kids too, because like the the owner of the house, like the father or whatever, mm -hmm. he's out there in the backyard and the kids are calling him a peeping Tom. They're making like racist jokes at him, like dog eater or whatever. What the In fuck a heavily populated thinking, Asian area, right? Yeah. And so um, I guess like the neighborhood, the, the neighbors in the neighborhood wanted to go ahead and make a protest to mm -hmm. show them like, yo, this shit is not okay, right? Oh, and wow, then, that's a, they're getting a huge pass in just a protest. I thought, yeah. I thought they might get so, stabbed or well, something. Well, it's probably a nicer area, <laughs> yeah, you know? Okay. And then, you know, um, the cops shut it down because mm -hmm. that it was like an unlawful gathering of people, of course. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, okay, cool. Guess yeah. what? It's a block party now. Yeah. And so it's the same shit, but now it's labeled a block party. Uh -huh. And the cops came over and then escorted that family out while the, while the block party was happening. Mm -hmm. And it's fucking amazing. It's like, even when they're wrong, right? They get yeah. special treatment from the cops. Yeah. And it, and it blew my fucking mind. And of course, later on, it started, the kids started getting scared because, mm -hmm. you know, people were fucking with them at school. It was yeah. like, you fuck with the wrong people. Yeah. And then I, I guess the parents were like, hey, like, is, is it possible for us to issue a public apology? And they're like, nah, yeah, nah. <laughs> too late for too that. Too late. <laughs> you said all the racial epithets, your yeah. fucking kids were harassing this person. And the only reason why you want to, it's not because you feel bad. It's because now you're scared and you damn well should be, you know? But that's that, but this, and the reason why I bring that up too is because could you imagine how bold and safe you feel as a white family to move into an almost all Asian American area and not feel that your life is going to be taken from you? And again, the important thing is how entitled they feel. Yeah. You know, it's a, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that kind of sums it up right there. That's of, some, it's like, that's how little they think of Asian people. It's mm -hmm. like, if I did that, nothing is going to happen, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. like they're Asian people. What yeah. are they going to do? Right. They may not say it out loud, but that type of behavior is reflective of that, right? Because I guarantee you, they wouldn't be going saying that shit in a Mexican neighborhood. No. You know, they wouldn't making beaner jokes to some, some Mexican people because yeah. they'd be scared. Yeah. But, and it just goes back to show how little they, um, how little a lot of these people in this country um, do not take yeah, Asian dude. Americans. Again, like, seriously. Again, look back like okay let's let's even just say like gangs right stereotype for asians if you're a asian gangster then you're a fucking joke you're not yeah. you're not you're not for real little do people know <laughs> like there's plenty of fucking asian gangs out there that you do not want to be around and you sure as hell not would not say some of those things that you would say um if, if you knew what type of people these people are dude you bro know? let me let me tell you guys man uh Back in the day, in the 90s, right, there's a lot of people who found this out in, in a very, very bad way mm -hmm. because a lot of Asian Americans, because they were bullied, and there's a lot of Asian Americans who came to this country that came from war-torn <laughs> countries. <laughs> right. I'm talking about they saw their neighbors killed, yeah. people getting their hands and their yeah. fucking heads chopped off with machetes. Yeah. And so a lot of these other Asian uh, American gangs found out, oh shit, these Asian people are fucking crazy. Those fucking savages. Like, they're not just shooting us. <laughs> yeah. They're actually chopping our fucking heads off and yeah. leaving them on railroad tracks. Yeah. It was shit like that. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Be very fucking careful because there might be a tipping point because if you want violence, the violence is there. Yeah. It's there. 
like it, it was kind of crazy. I remember just watching like these these docu series on like uh, um, Asian gangs and mm -hmm. stuff, and they're like, "Yo!" And there was other gang members in the area, like, "Yo, these Asian people are fucking crazy." Like we thought we could fuck with them, and <laughs> you know, we're, we're talking about killing people. These guys are like fucking dismembering us. Yeah. You know, yeah. not even on some serial killer shit. It's yeah. just that that's just how it is. Yeah, that's how they roll. Yeah, you know, like we we shoot one of theirs and they chop up our you yeah know, ten of ours. They fucking chop our heads off and <laughs> yeah. shit, like with machetes and shit. And yeah. they also got guns, which is nuts. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that's the route that I want, but if you don't want to take the pacifist route seriously, then what other option is there? So make your choice, right? You keep on pushing people into a corner. You're going to see what happens. This is not what I want, mm. right? But there's a lot of people out there that don't understand. It doesn't matter who you provoke. Everybody has it in them to retaliate. Yeah, man. L look at the LA riots. Just yeah. look at the LA riots. Look what happened. Right? Yeah, like uh, the Korean businesses and community was attacked. And so what did they do? It's like, all right, we got to fucking band together, get our fucking guns out. Like, we don't want to use it, but you're making us use it. Yeah. And we're going to protect ourselves and our community and our business now. And they didn't know that a lot of these Korean agencies at the time in Korea during that time, every Korean male citizen, four years mandatory military service. Yeah. You actually fucked with people who were in the military. <laughs> you didn't know that. You yeah. just thought that they were the nice neighborhood Asian people. <laughs> and then you found out that every fucking Asian guy knows how to use an automatic weapon and really and well. And they got like three straps at least. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and they're strapped the fuck up. They're yeah. like, yo, how the fuck do these people know how to use guns? Because yeah. they were in the military for four fucking years. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't even know that yeah. shit. Yeah. What I'm saying is like th that type of stuff can happen. I don't want it to be that way. Right? For sure. I but mean, why should why, ugly time. And it's like, why should we even have to explain ourselves like that? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Why does it have to even get to that point? I, I don't understand. And and again, why does it have to be that you're attacking elderly people who are so fucking defenseless and so mm -hmm. helpless? And and like the smallest thing could like be the tipping point where their life is over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Listen, I saw my grandpa fall down on some ice. And number one, that shit was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, but... <laughs> but just to give you perspective of how frail they are like this yeah. fool had a bruise on his ass for like fucking three months <laughs> that shit would not go away Dude, it was that's like, that's uh that's all he came away with i mean that's that, that's fortunate you yeah, know he like fell on his ass. well first of all like i'm not proud of this yeah but i've warned that old man multiple times to stop going outside and uh -huh. you know this fool was just like calling me an idiot because yeah. i'm super young <laughs> You know, he's like, what the fuck do you know? You know, you young ass, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, Sacramento gets really cold. And uh -huh. so the deck kind of has a little bit of frost on uh -huh. it. I'm like, don't go outside. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. I'm fucking 90 years old. You know, he's cursing at me and Korean. Yeah. I'm like, all right, man. Yeah. And I just see this fool through the screen door, just kind of teetering over with his old ass. Uh -huh. And then I see him go, up, oh, run up. <laughs> he's just like trying to catch himself, falls on his ass. And I go, I was like, I told you. And I yeah. picked him up and he had a fat bruise on his ass and he oh, never did it again. Man. But that's how frail old people are, man. Yeah, dude. That honestly, that could have ended his life if he fell the wrong way. I did not you know, think about that, and now you made me feel really bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just like, got really mad because he kept calling me fat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that ages were like you know uh, a, a fall for a normal person, a relatively young person, where it's like nothing could break their hip or like you know cause some hemorrhaging in their fucking head. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like it could be fatal. Well, a lot of people don't even understand this is like, and I think this is going to be enlightening for, you know, people who aren't around Asian Americans in general. It's like, I know a lot of you guys out there in your culture probably say, oh yeah, I love my gam gam and I love my pa pa or whatever. I don't know what the fuck you guys say, <laughs> but it, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever it is, you know, yeah. ma ma, yeah. but uh, pop, pop. A pop pop, yeah. you know, Asian Americans have this reverence for our elders, mm -hmm. right? And it, it stems from how we address people. So in a lot of Asian languages, the way we address elders, depending on their age, all have different words and phrases and sayings. This is how important age is to us, right? Me being a younger person, like if, if Edric was, if we were like in Korea, I would never address him by his name. I right. would have to call him young because he's older than right. me. Age is something that's very important. For sure, seniority, There's seniority. hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's not just the fucking number to us, right? Yeah. And so when you get as old as, you know, a grandparent has, and, you know, mind you, they're not like serial killers and murderers that just yeah. respect them. <laughs> yeah. They're, you know, respectable members of the community. Yeah. Um, when, when people pass away, because of like, 
Taoist and Confucius beliefs that stems from hundreds of hundreds of years ago, whether you're Christian or whatever, whatnot, mm -hmm. it's still here till this day. Mm -hmm. um, for Korean Americans, we have our Korean Thanksgiving, which is called Chuseok. Right. And during Chuseok, we actually bring um, our grandparents their favorite foods mm -hmm. and we present it to them for them yeah. in the afterlife. Then we burn incense. Right, you, right. And that is from those Confucius and Taoist beliefs that's still here till this day. Mm -hmm. These are the people that you have chosen to attack in our community. These are people that we highly respect. It's not that they're just old and fuck them, they're gonna die and leave us, what you know, whatever. Even to this, like people don't understand. Putting Asian, that's, this is why when you go to your Asian homie's house, you still see grandma and grandpa living with them. Mm -hmm. It's because there's we have such a high reverence for our elders, it's hard to put them in a home. It, it, we, we just can't do it. I feel like if for, for American people, like, yeah, put them in a home, they have their own life. Yeah. We don't have that. Yeah. We have this idea that we want them to live happily as possible. So by the time they get old, it's our position to go ahead and take care of them. It's like your responsibility and your duty, right? Yeah. And and it's like, it's built into the culture, especially if you're in kind of like the position where you're firstborn child, firstborn son, um, then yeah, once your parents get to a certain age, then you take care of them. No matter how burdensome it may be. No and matter, it gets burdensome. Yeah, no matter how much your wife may not like the mm -hmm. idea, um, unless, you know, they're the the grandparents are on that tip of like ah, i could take care of myself i refuse to let anybody take care of me. my grandpa too, that fool couldn't take care of nothing dude yeah. that's why i always crack fat jokes with me all the time like man you fucking old fuck i'm gonna beat your ass dude this one once it was so fucking funny because he was getting older and his memory would go away i remember i came back from uh la mm -hmm. and um i was like oh, it's me mm -hmm. you know it's your son guys you're yeah. you know grandson yeah He's like, oh, he comes up and he pats me on the butt. And then I'm going walking away into the living room. And I just hear this fool in the hallway talking to my mom. He's like, who's the fat guy? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, Even fuck with this his guy. Memories go, memory going, he's still calling you the fat guy. <laughs> yeah, he's still got to put one more dig on me, dude. And I'm like, yo, fuck this guy, dude. But even then, this is how much I respect my elders. Uh -huh. I still made him breakfast the next day. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I right. still made him his favorite foods. I still right. took care of him. And that's right. what I did. Yeah. You know, for, for me too, like, and I told the story before on this podcast, my grandma had uh, severe Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Like she couldn't remember anything at all. Mm -hmm. And we wanted her to be with us as long as possible, but it got to a point where we just couldn't take care of her. Yeah. Right. And what I mean by that, it got to the point where she couldn't feed herself. Mm -hmm. So they had to put a tube into her stomach oh, just shit. to put in food. Yeah. That is the extent that it took for her to not live in our household. Yeah. That we had to put her in a home. Yeah. But even then, and I don't think a lot of people even do this, and I know this because I went to the home a lot. Um, I saw my grandma at least five times a day and mm -hmm. checked up on her at the home for at least 20 to 30 minutes every day, mm -hmm. right? Even if she couldn't recognize me, mm -hmm. that's how important our relationship was, right? And even the people at the nursing home was like, wow, we see you a lot here. Like a lot of people don't visit their grandparents like you do, yeah. right? Because a lot of people at that home weren't Asian. Mm -hmm. They weren't Asian American. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, I, I went there to go take care of her a lot. And then after my grandmother passed, which was really, really hard, uh, my grandpa lived with us at home and he lived with us till the day he passed away when he was like 98, 97 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. And I had to make him breakfast every day yeah. at the school. Even though I lived somewhere else, I had to go and check up on him to see if he was fine. I had to do all this other stuff. And it's it's something that's a part of my, you know, duty. Right, right. I mean, it's 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 the values we were taught and that's mm -hmm. ingrained in us, right? The family values. Yeah. Um, and it's so important like within Asian culture, um, I, I would say like American culture is a little bit different when it comes to that type of thing. You know, I would say it's more common where it's like, oh, you know, as soon as you turn 18, you you, you supporting yourself, you yeah. figuring out yourself. But then- Good in luck, the, Zach. Yeah, in the Asian culture, it's like, no, we want to take care, that's our children. Yeah. So for as long as we can possibly try to take care of them, then we want to try to do that. Um, so, you know, very different values and and- you and I are kind of spawns of like the hybrid, right? Because yeah. like we grew up in America, so we are Americans, but we still have that that Asian culture instilled in us because our parents were immigrants and our grandparents were immigrants and they didn't really um, assimilate, I guess, so to speak, to American culture. They, they maintained that mm -hmm. and then they kind of passed it on to us. And it caused us a lot of confusion and maybe some trauma, but yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what we deal with, you know? Yeah, I mean, our, our position on everything is very, very unique. And, you know, our next generation, there's, there's going to be less of us around. 
For sure. Right? They're going to be more American than they are going to sure. be Korean or Asian American. I really want to pass that on to my kids too, though. No, no, um, that's why I'm just going to beat the shit out of them every day. <laughs> this is a part of our like, culture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Getting that fucking ass whooped is part of that <laughs> no. Asian culture, bro. This makes you Korean. <laughs> um, no, but I, I would really like to pass on kind of like some of the culture and the values and the language onto my kids. Because when I was younger, man, I always thought, man, this is so stupid because like I'm I'm here in America. Like, what do I need to know this shit for? What do I need to learn this shit for? But I definitely appreciated it as I started getting older. And I was glad that my parents just kind of forced that on me and, and kind of made me keep at it, right? Yeah. It's like even the language thing of like me being forced to only speak in Korean at home. I fucking hated it, bro. I was like, dude, I fucking speak English everywhere else to mm -hmm. everyone else why the fuck at home like i just want to speak comfortably but yeah i'm glad dude because it's helped me in so many different ways that i never would have imagined um i feel like a lot of korean people conversely um to a lot of other asians mm -hmm. um korean people didn't really give a fuck <laughs> like they wanted you to speak korean yeah because yeah. i know a lot of my other asian friends yeah. like their parents specifically only made them speak english because mm -hmm. they didn't want them to get bullied mm. but then our parents bullied us at home right, <laughs> they right. Speak korean so they're the bullies yeah they're, they're like, like i don't give a fuck what's going yeah, on in the outside exactly. world in this house you speak korean yeah. like the moment you step into this house it's actually south korea yeah. <laughs> you know like we follow by korean rules yeah. and then when you go out you do your american shit yeah you know which you know like we hated at first right but now it's like it, Mariel too she was surprised that I could speak Korean mm -hmm. because a lot of the Korean Americans that she met didn't have any ounce of their culture inside of them mm -hmm. at all whatsoever mm -hmm. their parents don't speak English yeah. but they don't speak Korean which was a very I don't even understand how they communicated mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but then again I, I feel like you and I are different because I think we actually have conversations with our parents yeah, yeah. which a lot of Korean American kids don't mm -hmm. they just kind of you know, have the typical conversation of, did you eat? Yeah. What did you do today? Yeah. What are you doing for work? Are you healthy? Yeah. Right. But then I could have extensive conversations with my parents. Yeah. You know, for example, is Abe, mm -hmm. like Abe, his, his brother, Joe, and then his uh, brother, Sam. Yeah. They all speak the most trashiest, worst Korean ever. Right. <laughs> and their mom doesn't really speak any English at all. Uh -huh. So the extent of their conversation that they have with their mom is very fucking limited. Isn't that such an interesting, like thing to observe though. Mm -hmm. Right. Is, is that like, that's the dynamic within a lot of these Asian or Korean families where, dude, your parents don't speak any English, yet your fucking Korean is trash. Yeah. So what was the dynamic there? And, 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 and like you just, uh, what you alluded to is that the interaction is so limited of, did you do your homework? Mm -hmm. Did you eat? Uh, go to sleep? Did you wash up? Right. It's just real basic shit. And kind of sad when you think about it. Right? It is really sad, and you know that also attributes to a lot of Asian Americans not having a relationship with their parents because it's lost in the language. Yeah, right. Absolutely. It, it's it's literally the most basic form of communication, and there's a lot to be said. Like for example, like I, I'm pretty sure Abe and them they don't actually know how fucking funny their mom is. Mm -hmm. Their mom is fucking funny, mm -hmm. right? And it's only I I know this because I can actually speak to her. We joke around a lot, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but I see how they talk to their mom and it sucks because I'm like, damn, you guys are actually missing out on a really cool relationship with your mom yeah. because she's fucking hilarious. Yeah. And there are things that I know about his, their parents that even they don't know right. because their mom can't really translate it to them and tell them, <laughs> you know. And that's why a language barrier can be so difficult to, you know, maintain a relationship with yeah. or to like to get into the, the, the depths of a relationship, mm -hmm. even when it's your mom even when it's your dad, you know, even when it's family. It's like, yes, I love this person, but do I really know this person? You know, mm -hmm. this person is my family, we're blood, they've taken care of me. As a result, I feel a sense of like responsibility for them too, but do I really know them as a person? I think, you know, that's a, it's really common for like our generation and, and like our parents' generation and so on, where they didn't really know who their parents were. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah, they're just your parents. They're your mom and your dad. But who are they as people? It's like, I don't know, because I don't talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> they don't that's talk what I'm to saying. Me. Like, there's there's so much to be said and, and to dive into that part of, like, the, the young Asian American experience. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I always run to a lot of young people who talk about, like, oh, my parents, you know, they just like to yell at me and tell me what to do is I guarantee you is because you don't know how to talk to them. Yeah. Not, not in yeah. the sense of 
um, you being disrespectful or rude. It's just there's right. a language barrier. Right, right. Like, and, and the other way around too. They don't know how to talk exactly. to them either. You know? Because they just don't do well, do yeah. this. And you know, like the most basic of basic language yeah. stuff. The reason why I'm allowed to have a relationship with my mom is because we can speak. I mean, my Korean isn't that great, yeah. but it's good enough to where we could joke around, talk about things outside of the mm -hmm. basic stuff. Mm -hmm. So- it's 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 fun to have conversations with her. Yeah. Right. We can joke about that. She can tell me stuff about herself, you know, when she was younger. Yo, she told me this fucking funny story the other day. Mm -hmm. This woman told me this one quick story about how when she was younger, she my mom is not somebody who is she's a tomboy. Mm -hmm. Super, super tomboy, right? Mm -hmm. Like she was known to be a tomboy in her class and everything else. She probably wasn't the brightest bulb, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but she was very violent. So she yeah. told me like one time these kids kept on calling her like tomato face, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And it's because my mom actually has a condition where she can't sweat. Really? Yeah. So when we were kids and we would go to these church events outside at the park and, and Sacramento gets really hot during uh -huh, the summer, uh -huh. I would always have to be there with an ice pack and have to cool her down on her neck uh -huh. with an ice pack because she can't develop sweat. That's so she crazy. had to be cooled down with like having water thrown at her yeah. or like water, I would just throw a water balloon <laughs> in her face. <laughs> like, no. But you know, she would have to get misted or have an ice pack on her neck because uh -huh. if she did, she would pass out. Uh -huh. So the, the actual function of sweating is to actually cool our body down. Mm. She doesn't have that. Her sweat glands don't work. I forgot what that condition is called. That's crazy. So, um, when she was, so when she was in grade school, a lot of these boys would tease her. And so... <laughs> There's a story my mom told me. She was like, yeah, my, these boys used to tease me a lot. But then, you know, they, they, they stopped real quick after I beat the shit out of them. I'm like, well, how did you beat the shit out of them? I was like, well, you know, like these kids, when they're the guys, they're young, they'll yeah. make fun of you. But that's probably because they like you a little bit. Yeah. So my mom was like, hey, let's go meet up after school and like make out or something. Right. And so the guy was like, oh, cool. Yeah. You know, this is the guy that used to make fun of her a lot. And so they kind of met up behind the school and mm -hmm. then she had like a rock and mm -hmm. then she just beat the living <laughs> shit out of him with it. Oh my God. <laughs> like, so she lit my mom as gangster as fuck, yeah. jumped the guy yeah. for calling her tomato face. Wow. And so and I was shocked. And so even when we went to Korea, I remember this as a kid because mm -hmm. my mom went to go see some of her friends that she hasn't seen in years. And I was like, what, seven or eight at the time. And when she, one of the things that I remembered the most was her meeting her friends and her friend, and she looks at her friend, she goes, oh, hi. And they're all happy to see each other. They go, these are my two kids. And the guy and the and the lady looked at her and she was like, "You got married?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they were almost shocked yeah. because she was so rough around the edge. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. and, and so, like, this is the stuff that a lot of people don't get to hear about their parents. Yeah, these are like personal fucking stories. Yeah, and it's because I can't speak the language well enough mm -hmm. to like understand. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, another thing too, uh, which it reminds me of, is like uh, one of my exes before uh, didn't have like the greatest relationship with their father, and um, one thing that I realized which is kind of common within Asian culture is that they, the kids look at their parents as parents. Like that is mom, that is dad, that is oma, that is appa or, or whatever, you know, Asian, uh, you know, ethnicity you might be, but they don't look at their parents necessarily as humans. Like, mm. I, and, and I was trying to tell her like, just for once, just kind of separate the dad title and just look at him as a human being. Like somebody that has his dreams, that has his joys, that has his fears, that has his feelings, that has his troubles, you know, and, and, and try to remove that label and just think about it as at, at him as a human being and then try to interact with him and then try to talk with him under that idea. And that was kind of like a really uh, eye-opening, I guess, uh, suggestion for her. And that helped to kind of have her take some steps, better steps with her dad to building a relationship. But I, th I think that's, again, a common thing with a lot of Asian kids is that they don't look at their parents and, and think like, what if they're just human beings? Not, not, not my mom, not my dad or whatever. And maybe they're just a friend or maybe there's somebody that I'm just trying to get to know a little better. Mm -hmm. And if I feel like when you kind of, uh, yeah, look at it from that perspective, it kind of changes how you think about your parents and how you look at them. And as a result, you might be able to engage them in a way that you wouldn't have been able to before because there's that mental block of that's mom, that's dad, that's it. Well, I think a lot of people too, they're going to find out 
they find this concept about uh, a little too late, mm-hmm. right? Is when they start to when they start to face their parents' mortality, mm. and that's the hard part. It's yeah. like you know you should probably do this before that happens, For sure. right? For sure. Because there's a moment too that you'll see in your parents um, a weakness that you never saw before. Yeah, vulnerability. A vulnerability. It's like when you see your parents, like oh shit, they're hurt. Yeah. Like they could possibly die. Yeah. Like what the fuck? Because when you're a kid, your parents are are just your rock. They're mm-hmm. your constant. Mm-hmm. So when you fight with them and you do all this stuff, you don't think that, oh, this is going to be the last time I ever get to speak to them. Yeah. It's just mom and dad are always going to be here forever. They're my superheroes. That's super mom, that's super dad. Yeah. And then when you're faced with their mortality, it's like, oh, what what how much time have I wasted fighting with these For people? Sure. That's For why sure. my parents and I we don't really fight anymore. Yeah. My dad literally said he goes, I only have like twenty good years left on this earth. Yeah. I'm not gonna do it fighting with you. Mm-hmm. Like I'm t- I'm done. Especially given the circumstances right now. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean shit, man. I've never been so paranoid in my life about like my parents' well being because, you know, they're at an at risk dude. We just had a very close family friend, my mom's best friend, and and she was like family to us, pass away two days ago. Uh, from complications because of covid you know oh wow and so like shit like that hits home like dude that and 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 like uh that that uh you know well i mean i guess i call her ajima but her sons i'm friends with too so like it's like dude i feel that man like that hits so close to home because that's my mom's best my mom was crushed by it because like she doesn't have any family here all her family's over in korea and so like not only is this person a best friend, but she was like a family member to her. They've known each other for like 30 years, Shit. you know? So, you know, it's devastating for her. And, and then for me, you know, like I'm, I'm like really saddened by her passing, but then I'm also thinking about my parents like, oh shit, dude, you guys can just as easily have the same thing happen to you if you don't continue to be careful, you know, yeah. continue to take care of yourself because you're at that point now. You're not young anymore. You're not... You can't just fucking, you know, will yourself through these type of situations. It's like, it's that fucking scary. And yeah, dude, mortality and and my parents is something that I've been thinking about more and more, you know? I think time was like, I I remember there's this one moment that hit me really hard. And I think it was like in my mid twenties or something Mm -hmm. like that, right? It was, I I, I had, I thought about this moment where I remember being in high school, Mm -hmm. which wasn't that far from where I was before. Yeah. And thinking that, fuck, man, these days are so slow. Why can't it just hurry up and be summer? Right. Why can't it just be winter break? Telling every me, day man. felt yeah. like, it felt like molasses dripping, right? Yeah. And then now, it's, I blink and then it's another year. I blink and then I look at my parents and I'm like, oh, they got older. Oh. That's, isn't that like the one of the most kind of scariest and like eye-opening moments for you? You, you look see at the them, age in their parents? Yeah, you're just like, all of a sudden, they just fucking got old. Yeah. And I'm like, what happened? And I'm like, oh, well, I'm not any younger either now too, Yeah, you know? Yeah, that, that, that's trippy. That was the weirdest moment. Right? I remember I, just, I went back home because I was living in LA at the mm-hmm. time and it was only like a couple of years. And then I went back home and I looked at my parents and I, and I had uh, my Canon 5D Mark III. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to take photos of my grandpa. Mm-hmm. And I lost those photos too. Good job, David. And then I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to take photos of my parents. Yeah. And I took a photo of them and I saw it in the computer and I'm like, holy shit they these people old. are fucking old yeah and when i look back at these older photos right when i was like eight or seven years old mm-hmm. mentally my mental image is of that person no for sure right for sure and then i snap back into reality i look at them now i'm like bro that was fucking 20 years ago and it's it's so crazy how it's like sudden you know what i mean it's Out not of this nowhere. progressive thing of like yeah you know now they're in their 60s and it's like yeah all of a sudden and and it's just like you said you imagine how you imagined your parents when you were younger. Mm-hmm. That's how they are until you have that moment. And then you're like, holy shit. They're like senior citizens. Yeah. They're, 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 they're fucking, they got us so old. You yeah. know, what happened? Like I said, you realize you're not young anymore either. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit, my back hurts. <laughs> I'm going through the same problems my dad did. Yeah. And I, yeah. It's, that is one of those things that kind of helps you kind of snap into reality. For sure, man. It, it's that idea of mortality. I'm like, yeah. oh shit, there's going to be a time where I'm going to have to bury my parents. Yeah. And I see that, and I saw that a little bit when my dad had to bury my grandma mm-hmm. and my dad had to bury his grandfather. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh shit. And my dad's a person and he probably went through these same thoughts for when, when he was raising me and he's like, oh, like my parents are a little older. They're, mm-hmm. I have to take care of them. And he had to bury his parents. There's going to be a time where I have to bury mine. Then my kids are going to have to bury me too. Right. 
And these thoughts too, sometimes it, it kind of goes down this rabbit hole. It's like, of, you know, where the fuck is time going? No, for sure. Like, man. how fast is time going? What am I doing with this time? Am I making yeah. it count? What yeah. am I, you know, and, you know, my anxiety gets the best. Right. Thing and you're, I just, smoke. you're just going to spiral. <laughs> yeah. Like, like give me some spiral. fucking weed right now. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Cause I, I get worried sometimes too, where I think about the, the time that I waste. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm in this point now where I don't know what wasting time exactly is or what it entails mm -hmm. because, um, Sometimes I think wasting time is me just always working too much. Yeah. And then sometimes uh, wasting time is me not working enough at all. Right. And I just get stuck in this this position where I just feel shit like bad about myself. No, I, <laughs> you know? I, I, I get it, man. I get what you're saying. And like, you know, I, I spoke about this on my Instagram story recently, but it, it kind of reminds me of, of the thought that I had, um, which was, you know, I, I had my birthday was uh, last week, right? Mm -hmm. And it was the first time that I ever spent my birthday alone, but I was it was fully expected. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, to an extent, but yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're in a pandemic, whatever. And then so Z asks me, hey, what are you going to do for your birthday this year? Like, fuck you. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck am I going to do? I mean, Why would you so, ask yeah, me that, bitch? Nothing, right? And then he's like, what did you do last year? And And I couldn't fucking remember, man. I was trying to think like, what the hell did I do last year? Who were the people that were there with me last year? And it's just like all of these kind of like uh, memories from different birthdays were just kind of like popping up, but it, I couldn't pinpoint when that was. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until he started talking about, he started slowly remembering, oh no, I think we were, we ate here and then we went there and I'm like, oh, you're right. Yeah. And yeah. okay. And then it started to kind of come up in my head, but I was like, dude, isn't it so fucking ironic that you know, you do these things, speaking of time, given like the idea of time being limited, you don't want to waste it. So you do these things to create memories, to create experiences and, and, and try to like get yourself out there. Yet I can't fucking remember a damn thing I did for my birthday celebration. I couldn't even fucking remember where I was, who I was with, like who I was with, I could make guesses at, right? Just just by assuming, okay, these are the people in my life or whatever, so these people are probably there. But then the fact that I couldn't remember that and the f the fact that I'm sitting here now and, and celebrated my birthday at home, fucking eating cake by myself. And, you know, my sister came to visit me. My mom sent me some food, so it wasn't all bad, you know? I got food sent to me, whatever. But I'm just saying, like, the celebration aspect of it was alone and I didn't do anything. And I'm like, dude, I'll never fucking forget this birthday. Yeah. You know, because I did nothing. So it's just like, yeah, I, I just found that really ironic, man. Because like, even if the idea of having limited time prompts you to act, prompts you to do things, it's still so easy to take for granted. Yeah. And that's another step. You know what I mean? To realize you have limited times to, and to do things, but then to also really be present in that and appreciate what it is that's happening. Because when that's the norm, like, yeah, even if you're acting to do it, it's so easy to take it for, take for granted. And I'm somebody who tries to keep myself accountable of not trying not to take things for granted, trying not to take situations, people for granted. But that made me realize, man, I still got a lot of work to do to like really be in the present and appreciate the moments that I have, the experiences that I have with the people that I have, you know? Um, so yeah, man, basically it sucks that we're slowly dying. But <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's that's what it is, and and you got to make the most of it somehow. Well, you know, these thoughts are also very good and healthy too, because uh, I think it also kind of puts in perspective of kind of why I do the things that I do and yeah. why I've chosen to make the moves that I've made, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get into these moments of like self doubt, where it's like, you know, David, if you just do these corny little sketches and you know follow the trends, you know, you could just be like the just biggest get by, and you know, yeah, whatever. You could you could do you could literally do what all these motherfuckers do right yeah. now and do it ten times better. Mm -hmm. But then there's this idea that I have of like how limited time is on this earth, right? Mm -hmm. And what I want to be remembered for, right? What I want people to know that I did when I when I lived here, right? And it's definitely not pranks. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not following trends. Like these things are not impactful in the future. Like what, what stamp have you left on anybody's life when you do these type of things? And it stops me from doing it because it just, that to me feels like a waste of time, you know? So sometimes this, this introspective thought of like, you know, time going by and, you know, making these things count, it actually does help me realign why I do the things that I do, mm. right? Why I started up a podcast, why I um, decided to do a film and then drop YouTube for a year and then, you know, 
make some of these moves that weren't as profitable as, as, as before. But whenever I get to look back and I look at these choices, I say, hey, you've made a positive impact in a lot of people's lives. And if you're going to continue to do that and that's your main goal, then you shouldn't feel bad about what the moves that you've made, even though you could have made more money. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it's, it's uh, really um, about legacy, but also it's this idea of like, you're going to exist in the ethers of like the internet forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's just such a strange concept because we didn't have that. Yeah. We didn't have that for the first half of our life. And the second half of life, now it's like, oh shit, this is permanent. You know, mm -hmm. like what I put out there will exist unless I remove it. Somebody could have ripped it and put it up, re-uploaded it too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so it'll exist and it's somewhere in the internet for, for the rest of time or until the end of this world even. And, and it's like, yeah, what, what are you leaving behind in, in, let's say the wake of like your death, right? It's like, what, then what, 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 what I, what am I leaving behind in the world? And, and it's like somebody that comes to mind it, it, when you talk about a scenario like that is Kobe. What did he leave behind? That Mamba mentality, Dude, man, right? When Kobe passed, that was one of those things too. My man, Kobe right there. Yeah. Right here, bro. You know, Kobe, you know? the crazy thing about Kobe is like, you know, fuck you, but I love you. you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm a Sacramento which Kings is, fan. Which says so much about who he was, though. Yeah. There's so many people who hated him when he was active as a player, but then after his death, they found themselves fucking just broken and crying. It's, it's crazy. It's like, I don't know if I have this in me, right? Mm -hmm. But I do want what Kobe, not has, but what he's done, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And what Dave Chappelle does, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're people who are cemented in their beliefs and they stick it all the way through. Yeah. And they've left in a very important legacy, right? When I look at somebody like um, the, 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 the two white boy brothers, fuck, my brain is dead. Logan Paul and oh, Jake yeah. Paul, right? They have money, they have notoriety and fame. But to me, they have zero legacy, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's something I could really care less for. Like I, I do generally feel like when they die, people, a few people might cry a little few tweens, but they'll forget about them the next day. Mm -hmm. Literally. Like if they stop doing YouTube like tomorrow, nobody's really going to miss them. Yeah. Somebody else will take that position and yeah. it'll disappear. Because it's so like trend heavy, you know? You know what I mean? Like yeah. literally so temporary. They, they've only, like that's the stuff. I don't want it's not despised. It's more like I could care less for. I genuinely believe those two people die. They'll be forgotten about in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. They've done all this work to make all, to be recognized in this, in the now, but it doesn't transfer over to the future. Mm -hmm. doesn't do anything else for the generation after. Yeah. It's just. They died. Oh, I'm so sad. They did. I don't know. What What did they do? And then people move on to the next big star. Yeah. I mean, like Kobe, he passed away last year and it feels like it was yesterday. Yeah. Stuff that he has Im implemented in this earth world right now, people still follow it. They go, do you have mama mentality? Yeah. Do you have mama mentality? Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. He's been gone a whole year now yeah, and people talk about crazy. him like he's still alive till this day. Yeah. That's going to happen for Michael Jordan. It happens to every person on this wall right now, except for these two sluts over here. <laughs> but Mike Tyson. Yeah. Despite his shady past right. and a lot of the stuff that he's done, he's like, been a little bit precarious. Iron Mike still. Yeah, he's still yeah. Iron Mike. He still does what he does. You know what I mean? DMT. I'm out of this world. You know, sometimes I don't even know where I'm at. I See, David, fuck. people like you and me. <laughs> Remember that yeah, dream? Yeah, people you like you and me, David. You know, a lot of people, they just wish that they could do what we do. But that's why they're out there in the crowd and we're here. Uh, and then you have Bruce Lee. The man has been gone till this day. And people have ridiculous conversations about Bruce Lee till right. this day because of the legacy that he's left Be behind. Be like water, you right? know? Like, they're like, oh my God, like... Bruce Lee could probably beat up every UFC star, even though it's not true. <laughs> yeah. You know, people still want to believe it yeah. because of a legend that he is. Right. You know, not, not everybody can go ahead and do that, but it doesn't mean that I won't try to. Yeah, exactly. And that's the type of legacy that I want to leave behind. Look, chasing perfection doesn't necessarily have to mean because you believe that you realistically think you can achieve perfection. Uh -huh. It's because you're just striving to get to it as close as possible. Mm -hmm. Perfection is, is, is impossible. You know, mm -hmm. it's unrealistic. But it doesn't mean that you can't strive for it. You try to get as close to that as possible so that when you look back at the effort that you made, you look back at it and think, you know what? I gave it everything I possibly could have, you know? And, and I, got, I got to be able to live with the results that I got from it. Um, and, and so I feel like it applies to what you're saying perfectly within what you're doing, right? Whatever this concept of perfection is in terms of like leaving a lasting legacy and a, leaving something meaningful for the world behind to to like 
absorb and digest long after you've passed and become dirt in the earth. What is that thing? You know, yeah. what, what is it that you're working towards? And obviously nobody could determine that except you, how it feels in your gut. Like you just said, certain things that you've thought about doing, you passed on it because in your gut, it doesn't ring right. It doesn't ring true for you. You're just like, this is so temporary. I was supposed to be on Wild and Out. <laughs> <laughs> my life would have been way different yeah well that would have been yeah that would have yeah. been pretty different for yeah. sure <laughs> too bad i fucking hate that shit <laughs> <laughs> well you did what you got to do you know what i mean i wouldn't have done well on that show yeah i just wouldn't have liked the people on there yeah I mean, they're probably they're fine but mm -hmm. just the, the show i just couldn't do it like, yeah I just didn't like yeah it. that's the thing like nobody knows yourself better than you man and so like nobody can sit here and be like oh my god i can't believe you passed on an opportunity like because they don't know what you're feeling. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not in, it, just like when Dave Chappelle left the fucking, what, 50 mil. Yeah. Oh, how can you fucking leave 50 mil with little to, to like no regard of like what the situation actually was, yeah. what it meant to him personally. I mean, he's obviously elaborated that on that a lot more in more recent times. But yeah, it was just like, you're just thinking about it from your perspective of oh my god 50 mil is such a fucking life-changing thing how could you pass 50 million dollars mm -hmm. but it's like nah man like money is not necessarily everything fame is not necessarily everything you're looking at it from such a limited perspective which is uniquely yours you're not you're not looking at it from the person that it's actually affecting yeah. who who has to make that decision and then live with it you know and so yeah i think just again being present being mindful uh being appreciative I think those are all things that applies to what we just talked about yeah, in the past 100%. like 30 minutes, you know? Well, guys, that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. Stop fucking with Asian people. <laughs> stop. Stop fucking beating on her. I'm I, laughing I, about it, but I'm actually pretty fucking pissed. Yeah, you well, know? because it's it just the idea of it is ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. It's so fucking ridiculous. If, if, if I catch a motherfucker, man, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. But, <laughs> you know, just stop. I'm going to beat you up in the most Asian way possible. I'm gonna throw ninja stars at your eyes and I'm gonna beat your fucking kneecaps with nunchucks. Please just stop. Please just stop, man. Yeah. Not not just fucking Asian elderly, just any elderly people. Just leave them alone. They're, they, they've they paid their fucking dues in life. Let them just exit gracefully on, on their own will. Fucking it doesn't, crazy, it does not have to be on fucking slamming into the pavement and, and just being blindsided. You know what I mean? That Like that is such a fucking car. I swear to God, if I ever see one of you motherfuckers, I swear piss in your mouth yeah <laughs> yeah well guys you could catch edric at ed park no, no. ed two <laughs> sorry ed two edtwo guys come on you know me by now come yes. on man and then uh secret society yes and uh brain 15 for first time purchasers to get 15 percent off yep it's the, what you see these bomber jacks that we yes. have on the hat we, on that it was not planned i actually was about to wear the black one today too yep. but we'll, something in me told me i should wear the olive one instead yep. we'll have sex after this too <laughs> wearing these jackets and then we will see you all next time every sundays and thursdays love you guys very much peace peace